Folks, welcome to another edition in Real Estate Experts. As always, I'm your host, Glenn Twiddle, bringing you leading experts from around the country and around the world to help you, the everyday Australian, tread this minefield that is the real estate industry. Whether it's building wealth through property, selling a home for top dollar, protecting yourself in your retirement, whatever the case is, if you've got some questions around business, branding, real estate, whatever the case may be, we've got you covered. Today, I'm so honored to be bringing you one of Australia's leading real estate agents, commonly known as Australia's fastest real estate estate agent. He's helped me, in fact, even to the point where together, Chris and I have brought out Sir Richard Branson, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Gary Vaynerchuk, Josh Altman from Million Dollar Listing. He's been my partner in crime in all of those ventures, and I'm honoured to be bringing you today the guy who helped me build my own business, and that's Chris Gilmore. Chris, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Yeah, no worries, Glenn. Thanks for having me. So, mate, your list of accolades is a mile long in the real estate business, and we're going to get to that in a moment. But I've got to ask you, this Australia's fastest agent tag, we've got to talk to the audience about that. Where did that come from? Because I'm so fascinated by your success outside of real estate as Australia's Formula 3 racing car champion. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, look, Glenn, that's, uh, that tagline was basically because of my motor racing. So I started motor racing when I was five, and uh, the category that we race now and we run a team, uh, is the fastest cars that you can possibly race in Australia. So I thought, why not? You know, I'm a real estate agent. There's no one faster than me on the track. So <laughs> there we go. We're Australia's fastest agent. I think some sellers probably think that we sell the homes too quick. Um, in some cases we do, but... Well, not too quick, mate. Yeah. But when you get the dollars you get, it's insane. But um, let me ask you, you held the, uh, the lap record as the fastest human being ever around the Bathurst track. Mate, give us a... Give us that story. Yeah, look, um, yeah, that's probably my only claim to fame in, in <laughs> motor racing, but uh, we, we did a 204.61 around uh, Mount Panorama mm -hmm. in uh, 2012. We broke the lap record there, mm -hmm. uh, which was held by, um, I'm not too sure who it was held by. It was probably one of the V8 guys, but um, that record's now been broken, unfortunately. So By another Formula 3 Yeah, guy? yeah, Formula yeah. 3 still <laughs> hold it, uh, which is good. So, But yeah, about another two seconds faster or something. Wow. So they resurfaced the track and I haven't been back since. So, <laughs> But look, you know, uh, there's not too many people in the world that can say that they held the lap record at Bathurst. So yeah. it's pretty special. Absolutely. So certainly the fastest agent tag. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece of marketing and I've loved seeing that. Um, so mate, tell me, about for our viewers they've got a minefield to tread when it comes to real estate i mean every real estate agent out there in the country uh, will say that they should sell with them that they're the best they're the hot best negotiator etc etc they can't all be telling the truth so tell us how can we sort out the talkers from the walkers meaning how can we talk, sort out the ones who say they can do the job the best and find really the chris gilmore of our area yeah, Glenn, it's really easy. It comes back to results. You know, like uh, everyone can get in their mailbox, oh, we're number one or this agency's number one in the world or whatever it might be, but it really does just simply come back to results. And mm -hmm. there's plenty of websites out there that you can really, where the agents can't actually hide nowadays with the technology and, and the information that's out there. So, you know, there's numerous websites, realestate.com, they even now have in suburbs uh, the where the agents are ranked with the amount of sales. RateMyAgent.com.au is probably the best website in Australia where they can actually just log in and punch in the, uh, the agent's name and, and it'll tell you all about their results, mm. uh, their clearance rates for auctions and their private treaty sales and uh, their average sales price in that particular area. So it's pretty easy nowadays. Mm. And I love that um, you can even search by suburb and just, it'll tell you who, who the winners are, won't it? Yeah, definitely. So yeah. If, they, if they live in a certain suburb and, and you know, it's, it's pretty simple. You can simply just drive around a suburb nowadays and like I, I could go to a suburb that I've never sold in before and I can work out fairly quickly who's an active agent in that area. You know, there's a lot of talk between, you know, listing and selling. So I think it's more about the sold signs than it is the for sale signs. Mm. That um, because anyone can really list a property, but it's it's taking a buyer through those steps and the seller through that journey to actually finalise and close the deal. So. Mm. And so there might be some argument that says that getting those sales by pure volume might be one good indicator, but how about quality over quantity? Like if we were to visit an agent in their place of business, like meaning going to an open house that they've got a property for sale, what are some of the indicators at that open house? Say so one of our viewers was considering an agent or two or three, and they visited them at their open for inspections at the open houses of another property. 
What are some of those things to be on the lookout for that will really sort out the quality agents from maybe someone who's flogging off properties too cheaply? Yeah, look, probably the first thing that your viewers should do would be um, is not actually tell the agent that you're thinking of selling. Just pretend that you are an actual buyer mm -hmm. and just see how the agent converses with you as a buyer. How are you treated? How are you greeted? Is there two team members at the open home? You know, is, have they got the assistant at the front to greet you so the agent can be inside selling the property? Mm. You know, what sort of stuff and information are you being given about the home? Like I've been to plenty of open, like thousands of open homes <laughs> and sometimes I just get a business card. Mm. Like how is that selling the property? How is that giving me the information that I need to know. I could be moving into state and need to know about schools, public transport, shops, you know, where where is everything local? So that's a good way. How do they present on the outside? Can you tell that there's an open home actually going on? M many times I've driven past and I see this little signboard on the <laughs> on the driveway. You've got to make it look like a carnival, like you know, stuff is actually happening inside the home. But it's really the follow-up from the agent as well. You know, how quickly did they follow up? I guarantee, and I'm pretty sure you've done it before, Glenn, that uh, you've done a, a secret shop of real estate agents uh, from open homes. That I think there was like one out of 10 actually contacted you back and asked feedback about that property. So I know that it's very hard for the viewers out there to, to select an agent, but these are the key things that they could be looking for, for sure. Mm. So I love that you talk about excitement, how you, you make sure there's, a, you use the word a carnival, that it looks like you've got excitement going on. There's lots of guests at that open. There's, there's lots of stuff going around. How do you use that excitement to, because you're notorious for getting top dollar for your sellers. You've got this reputation of everything you sell turns to a high price. Records are, you know, like you break records on the racetrack, you break, you break records in real estate. How do you use that excitement to, drive prices up and get these insane prices that you're so notorious for? Well, it, that's simple, Glenn, because competition breaks records. You know, it, it happens in swimming pools. <laughs> it, it happens in the Olympic Games, anything like that. It's no different for a seller when selling a home. The more people that you can get to see your home, to get them into your home, the greater the buzz, the more energy around that property, the more competition. So instead of having one buyer for your home, try and produce two or three. And that's what the more people that see the home, obviously that comes back to marketing and, and the role of the agent and who they've got on their, their database and stuff like that. But the more energy and the more buzz will certainly drive up the seller's price at the end of the day. It's very, very simple. So really, if we were going to summarise that, we're looking to go check them out, make sure there's some excitement around. A couple of people at the open is helpful. Quality marketing material, not just a business card and a photocopied brochure. Um, have I got everything? <laughs> yeah, their follow-up. It's it's mm. the key is in the follow-up because you know I've seen time and time again some a buyer has walked into a home and then you follow them up you know a week or two weeks later or three months after that as well and they've completely brought in a suburb that they weren't even talking about. So I think it's really key to know and understand your buyers. I'm very lucky. I run a team, so I have a full-time dedicated buyers agent. So we've got uh, in the company around fourteen thousand registered buyers. So very very hard to, to to get through all of them but we have a full-time uh, troy is his name and that's all he does mm. is, is just works with the buyers so and it's understanding what the buyers want but also understanding what your seller wants as well mm, certainly and so chris mate i've got to hit you up well i've got this first segment here uh, for a free copy of your book sold in 60 seconds they can get it at sold in 60 seconds dot com dot au that's with a six zero not a yep. 60 but sold in 60 seconds dot com dot au now here's where i get cheeky I know you're selling it. I know it's a best-selling book. Can I hit you up for a, for a freebie for our viewers? Yeah, for your viewers, Glenn. I've got no problem doing that. If I can help one or two people you know, achieve a maximum sale price, whether, whether they're here in Brisbane or Australia, anyway. it doesn't matter. Mm. So just go to the website, soldin60seconds.com.au. We'll put a little um, code up there. Yeah, I'll put a promo up there. So let's, uh, experts. There you go. There uh, you go. So it'll be right there, guys. Put that code in at www.soldin60seconds.com.au. Chris Gilmore, thank you so much. So Chris, buying the listing, you've talked about it in your phenomenal book, Sold in 60 Seconds, uh, that there's a practice that goes on that's called buying a listing. First off, for our viewers who may not know what that is, what's buying a listing? Uh, in the industry, we call it buying the listing. When an agent comes into a seller's property, uh, sometimes the sellers will tell the agent what they're hoping to get. Now we do understand most sellers do believe their home is worth more than probably what it really is. It's just human nature. But that's when the agent will either come in with an excessively high price to, to lure the, the seller in to sell with them, 
when it's really, it's, it's not going to be anywhere sold near that price. So that's what we call in the industry buying the listing. Mm. So uh, your viewers should be very careful of agents like this. If, if you know your marketplace, an agent should be within ten, twenty thousand dollars of where it should actually sell. If an agent comes in and tells you that your home is worth probably fifty to a hundred thousand dollars more, I'd be questioning it. And you can see though that where most people would, as you say, human nature would be kind of optimistic about getting the highest possible price. Tell me why it's a a problem. Well, you're like surely, isn't it just okay to start a bit higher? And if that's not going to be the right price, then we'll we'll ease it back accordingly until we hit that sweet spot. Isn't it better to start high? Most people believe that it is better. It's probably it's going to do you actually no good at the end of the campaign. So it's actually going to really not help you big time. And the reason why is the longer that your home is on the market, the less people that are actually going to see it because there's new properties coming to the market every single day. And you've got about two weeks to actually get it out to the marketplace and that's where you're going to have the most traction and the most inquiry. So the old fashioned, let's start up here and drop and drop and drop and drop. Well, the buyers have all these websites. They have all the information now. So they know how long you've been on the market for. They know what you started with. And, and they, they're not silly, Glenn. Buyers are not stupid nowadays, you know what I mean? So I think if you're going to start high and work your way down, definitely the wrong method to do. So, so it sounds like we're wasting those first couple of weeks of marketing, and that's when most agents will spend the most of the seller's money on the market. I mean, is that the way it works? And is that why you just are begging people to get a professional agent in there who does it the right way? Yeah, definitely, because if you start too high for the market, your best buyer has probably come through the property and seen it when it's at you know 10% above market value. They move on because they instantly just recognise that your home is overpriced and go and buy something else. Over the weeks, you drop and drop and drop and drop, and now really you're feeding at the bottom of the basket for, for not your best buyer. So what you want to do is, like we said in the last episode, is competition breaks records. So the more people that you can have in your property, the higher price your property will end up selling for. But if you start too high, your inquiry level will be completely very, very low. So my viewers have often come to me saying that every time the real estate agent wants to talk to me, it's just to tell me to drop my price. When only three weeks ago they told me it was worth this, now they're telling me drop my price, drop my price. Is that a symptom of sellers kind of falling for the trap? Yeah, 100% it is, you know. If you've got your property set and priced right, right from the beginning, you, your property should be sold within the first two weeks. Yeah, it's that simple. And that's where you've got the tagline, Australia's fastest agent. Is that why that, you know, when people do come to you say, Chris, Chris, you're selling them too fast, is that because you didn't have time to do what every other real estate agent would do and kind of beat the seller down on price? No, it's, it's just being smart with your strategy and knowing your market. If you're an expert, so typically when we see the most, when the most agents that buy the listing are probably the new agents that have got no stock, they need to get their sign boards, they need to start you know, getting sellers to sell with. So they're the ones that typically do come in and overprice properties right from the word go. A professional and an area expert of their market will be able to give you fact by fact and case studies and recent results of where a property stood, what it sold for and how long it sold in. You mm. know what I mean? So that's really what I would be asking as a seller. Chris, do you think it's kind of them not knowing or do you think it's deceptive? Like, do you think they're optimistically naive and overpricing or do you think it's a very deliberate strategy? It's, I 100% I believe it's deliberate. So if for them, you know, they're getting grounded by their, their principal in their office, they need to get sales, they need to get listings. Um, you know, it's, it's rife in our industry. It's possibly the worst thing that a seller or an agent can do to a seller, so I... Yeah, mate, oh, look, I'd love to believe that it was just them naively being optimistic, but agreed, mate, the proof's in the pudding that when it seems like that's their system, list at any price, then beat the seller down. I mean, they even call it conditioning, so, or educating. So, uh, yeah, it is a shame, but then that's the beauty of, uh, of your area. Your viewers and your people in your area get to, uh, get to just choose you, so <laughs> it's awesome. And, and you know what? The viewers do come to me a lot with, oh, I've got one agent that's just shoving the auction method of sale down my throat, and then I've got another agent saying, auction is the devil. So give us a rundown on the unique ways that you actually transact a property and what your favourite method or methods of sale are. 
Yeah, look, Glenn, for me, it's very, very easy. My favourite method is what we call a fixed date sale. Okay, so it's actually in between private treaty, where you go to the market with a price, and the auction concept. So the one thing I don't like about the auction is that the buyers yell out how much they're prepared to pay. And all they have to do is be a dollar more than the reserve and that property sells. Mm. But they could have had an extra $20,000 still in their pocket, but they didn't have to spend that, mm. okay? So, and then with private treaty, if you go to the market with a price, if your price is wrong, your whole campaign is, is, is gone. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we come up with fixed date sale. So that's when we go to the market for the first two weeks with no price, because we know for a fact that buyers will dismiss properties without even going and seeing them based on its price. Mm -hmm. Now I could say to you, Glenn, you're looking at purchasing a home. How much are you looking at spending? 600,000, okay. What if we had a property at 700,000? Would you go and look at it? No, well, that's above my budget. Two weeks later, you saw it sold for 600,000, but you missed out, you never went and saw it. So what we wanna do is we wanna remove price from the transaction. We want the buyers to come and see the home, feel the home, smell the home, and fall in love with the home. If we find that one heart buyer, the emotional buyer, they will pay 10, 20, $50,000 more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And they're not dismissing the home based on price. They actually have to come and view the home. So that's a great tip for all sellers, selling anywhere in Australia. It sounds like what the auction guys say though. Like the auction guys always say, oh, remove the price and all that sort of thing. So tell us about the key differences between this unique method that you have pioneered, certainly in Queensland, I know of no one who's doing it so successfully and as good because everyone else is doing it one of those other two ways. Tell us about the differences about this method with those similarities that you've just described. That's a lot of the auction guys say that sort of stuff. Yeah, like I said, Glenn, it is very similar to an auction. Uh, with a fixed date sale, it's shorter, okay? So most auction campaigns are four weeks. We tend to find that the buyers, they don't hang around for four weeks. If there's another property that comes on the market in three days time and it's similar and it's easier for them to buy, they'll just go and buy it, mm. okay? So that's one key thing with a fixed date sale. It's for two weeks only, mm. nice and quick. Uh, the other biggest thing, and, and this is probably where we can, and we smash our records with, is when the buyer makes an offer, each buyer doesn't know what every buyer is offering. So that's the private treaty side of things where mm. the offers are actually done in our offers behind closed doors. So if we have multiple buyers, they all don't know how much they're offering for that particular property. And at the end of the day, the agent's role is only to find that emotional buyer. Mm. So that emotional buyer will pay 10, 20, $50,000 more over and above anybody else. Mm. And that's how we get the top dollar. Wow, it sounds unique. I mean, tell me about the results you've been having with that because it, the, the other two methods, private treaty with a price or auction, have been around for so long yep. and most other real estate agents choose one of those two camps. Tell us about your success stories uh, with this relatively new and innovative approach. Yeah, well look, the current clearance rates, just to say here in Brisbane, are 34% for auction. Uh, with our fixed date sale method, we're 96% success rate within wow. the first two weeks. So essentially everything's selling. Pretty much. But your reputation is uh, very well deserved. Australia's fastest agent. <laughs> now tell us though about some of the specifics. Tell us about some of your favourite strategies where you've helped sellers and what those extra dollars that those record prices that you're getting has done for their lifestyle. Yeah, look, probably, probably my most favourite one was we, we were selling this particular home uh, for this family and they had young kids and they thought their home was worth around half a million dollars. And as an agent, we thought the property, and we're an expert in this area, we're, this is our core area, we've been selling in it. And this is where real estate agents can get it wrong. We're not the emotional buyer. Our job is to find the emotional buyer for the mm. seller. So when we've looked at all the data and, and all our past sales in this particular area, we thought, yeah, half a million was, was pretty much on par. Mm -hmm. When we went to the market, the first open home that we had, we had 36 groups come through the property, okay? And we actually received 14 offers for the property. Wow. Okay, so we ended up selling the property at 565,000. Wow. So one, the seller was wrong. Two, I was completely wrong. Okay, now that $565,000 offer, the second best offer we had was 530. Mm. But that 565 buyer didn't know that 530 was the second highest. So that's so the if beauty. it was auction, it would have sold for 531. 100%. Well, we probably would have set reserve at 500, 510. 
Mm. You know what I mean? So it's hard to say. So that's where that strategy works fantastic. And it wasn't until I got a postcard from them in Disneyland where it, that's where it probably met, meant the most. So wow. they, they, with the extra money, they, they took their kids, flew business class, wow. okay, which was kind of cool, uh, and, and went over to LA for, for Disneyland with the kids with the Man. extra money. So that's what it can do. And it can do that, and, and any agent can do that for any home seller anywhere in Australia. It's yeah. really simple. Wow, what I love about that, mate, is the impact you must have made on that family, that while they're having the time of their life in Disneyland, they think of the guy that made that possible and said your postcard, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it is It is really cool, you know, we've got a great relationship with them, but at the end of the day, that's the role of the agent, you know. Mm. I know a lot of your viewers probably think we're paid too much, but when we can bring extra value to, to a homeowner like that, I think we're, our, you know, we're worth every cent, so. Mm. So my question next question is on. There are some agents that seem like they are charging a year's salary, right? for their services. And then there are some agents that seem like they will almost sell your home for free and everywhere in between. Now I know that you're not the most expensive agent that has ever existed, nor are you the cheapest, but I wanna pick your brain about how much my viewers should be paying their real estate agent. Because there is such a discrepancy and no one knows. You hinted on it last time in the last episode when we talked about you getting $65,000 more for that awesome family who sent you a postcard from Disneyland Tell us your take on the cost of transacting a property. Yeah, look, buying and selling real estate, it's an expensive thing. We, you know, we can't hide that fact. When you're buying, you pay your stamp duty. And when you're selling, you've got to pay the agent commission. We all, there's many agents in Australia. Some will sell your home at a cap rate at $4,000, mm -hmm. which I think is ridiculous. Um, and then a, a top performing agent will come in and say, look, our fee is $20,000. Everyone thinks real estate agents are all the same, and, mm. and that's the, probably the biggest issue. We're not all the same. Some of us have got 20 years experience, some are probably brand new and just working for a, a large franchise group, and you would never know what their experience is. Well, well, the statistics are that literally one in 10 real estate agents makes it to the two year mark. So there's a 90% chance that when you call out an agent, if you don't know they've got the results, is there's a nine out of 10 chance they're one of the rookies that you're describing. Yeah, and, and I think that's where it's really important. And, you know, it's like performing heart surgery. Do you want the cheapest or do you want the best surgeon that's mm. going to keep you alive? You know, it's, it's, we're playing with your life. Now, with selling a home, we're, we're playing with your biggest asset. You know, we could be selling a $200,000 home or a $4 million home. Yeah. So selling your home is the biggest transactional asset you'll ever do in your life. You know, it's not like selling a car. So it is critical that they do get it right. And a lot of home sellers... They, they choose their agent based on their fee. You know, they don't choose on their marketing, their skill, their negotiation levels, uh, their area expert. You know, they simply just choose them who's the cheapest. Mm. And that's actually going to cost them a lot more. Yeah, so t tell us about that. Say an agent is, you know, one agent's 12000 and one agent's 7000 or something, so there might be a $5,000 differential. Sure. Tell us about some of the examples or perhaps what your take is on how expensive that $5,000 discount can actually turn out to be? Yeah, there's two key things. I would never sell with a capped agent, a uh, capped commission agent, right? Because there's no incentive for them to get you $10,000 more or $20,000 more. No matter what they sell your home for, you pay them the same amount. So there's, there's no reward for that agent. And I think we're a top performing agent, the higher we can get, the more we get paid. So we're in this together. You should be working as a team and not thinking of the cost. Okay, and then if you've got an example of 12,000 and the other agents at, at 7,000, what if that 12,000, let's say I was the $12,000 agent and I was competing against an agent that was gonna charge you seven, but I'd sold 55 properties in the suburb and they'd sold three and my average sale price was $42,000 more than the area of average or more than that other agent. Now you're looking at the $5,000 difference, I'm looking at $37,000 more I can bring to the table. Mm. That is where, so on paper, they're actually the cheapest agent because they're going to get you more for your home. And that's a top performing agent. They're wired different. They're all about getting results and a high price because that's how they get their next client. So be very careful if, if you've got multiple agents. You know, I always recommend at least just get two agents in. Some people get five in. They just get confused and and you know, mind boggled in the situation. But I'd select maybe two agents total, 
Don't select them on fee. Select them on who you think is going to be the best person to represent you and your home in the marketplace, who you think is an absolute demon in negotiating, okay? And ask them to drop their fee. Hmm. And ask them and see where they stand. And if they, like, if you were to ask me... Yeah, yeah, so Chris, will you please do it for 7000 Well, no. How would you... No. <laughs> okay. It's that simple. Hmm. So I'm protecting my own fee, just like I'm going to protect your price when we go to the market. So if I was to say, yeah, sure, Glenn, I'll do that. So then a buyer comes in and says, well, Chris, you've got it on the market at 550,000. Well, the owner take 530. Yeah, you'll probably get it for that. Mm. You know, well, there's $20,000 gone like that mm. in, a, in a simple 10 second conversation. So it, it's almost like you're saying that the agent who will drop their fee just like that, it's almost like, you know, my viewer as the seller, uh, they've just out negotiated the person they're about to hire to be a professional negotiator for them. They Maybe they should be selling them themselves. They, they should <laughs> just put the sign out the front, save all their marketing money and their $7,000 that they're going to pay the, the agent to, to be a delivery person because that's all I believe that they are. Mm. You know, you want a skilled negotiator. The, the role of a real estate agent, there is only two roles of a real estate agent. There's marketing and negotiating. Mm. They're the two things that a real estate agent can bring to the table mm. and you need to select the best one. So they're not actually selling the home. Is that what you're saying? No, not at all. The, the, the seller is the person that actually sells the home. The way that they present the home, sure, the role of the agent is to help them and advise them and to give them that advice but it's the way that they price their home, the method that they select, because it all comes down to, to the owner, you know, what they would like to do. So the, t the two key roles of an agent is marketing, negotiating, mm. and you want to find the best agent that is good at both. So it's almost like the very thing that a lot of home sellers are choosing agents on, whether or not they'll drop their price, that's almost saying that one of those two critical things that you said, they're no good at. <laughs> Incredible. Tell us about this particular side of it, finding a great marketer. Is it just, isn't it just about throwing it up on the internet and hoping what happens? Tell us, tell us about your unique take and your unique skill set that you've developed in marketing properties. Yeah, look, marketing is, we could speak probably three hours on this topic <laughs> because that is what selling a home all comes back to is how good is the marketing because the marketing is what brings the people to the home. And you talked about that in another in another episode where you had like one of your homes you sold 36 groups through or whatever it was and you used your marketing to make that happen and those 36, I love the story you told a couple of episodes ago. If you didn't see the episode folks, go back a few episodes and hear about the family from Disneyland selling uh, sending Chris a postcard with an extra $65,000 in their bank account as a result yep. of your marketing prowess. Tell us about how you did that when other agents get two or one buyer through their, their open houses. Look, I think the first key thing is the seller does need to contribute, okay? There's a lot of agents out there that will offer free marketing, okay? We can all offer free marketing, but what's the quality gonna be yeah, like? Just like all agents aren't created equal, all marketing isn't created that, equal as well. That's right, if it's free, then you know it's probably not gonna be the best, okay? Mm. And you only get one chance here. Mm. You only get one chance, so that you've gotta make sure that you've selected the right agent, you've selected the best method, but your marketing has to be world class. It mm. is that simple, because like, if we were to take my area for, for instance, right? If, if a buyer was to look at our market right now, we're competing with around 280 homes on the market. So how can we make that home stand out from the other 279 that are on the market? And that's where the, the marketing skills of the agents come back to it. So, you know, just really, and can I, can I go through some of the simple stuff? I would love it. <laughs> okay, so start with professional photography. Mm -hmm. That's the key number one thing. You've got to have good looking photos, okay? Don't let the agent take their own photos. It's a big no-no. They're real estate agents, they're not photographers, mm. okay? So leave that up to the professionals. Well, we've seen some of those agent taken photos. And you know what, if they don't follow your advice like we're talking about, is that, the only other option to me sounds like we've got to drop the price. And it sounds like that's why these, these guys are getting these bargain prices. And that's not what our sellers want, is it? No, well, every seller wants top dollar. So key couple of things, professional f photography, okay? Make sure the agent has someone on, on standby ready to take photos. The second thing is floor plans, mm -hmm. okay? 80% of the buyers that we see love floor plans, okay? We're all time poor. We've got 280 homes to pick from. They're not gonna go and look at all 280. They're gonna shortlist everything. So we wanna give them as much information as possible for them to make the right decision to come and look at this property. Mm -hmm. So a floor plan is key. 
And mate, I love that you've almost gotten famous in your area. Not almost, you are, you're a, a household name because, and you've had agents come from around the country, even flying from international to hear you speak on another unique part of your marketing and that's video. Talk to us about how you use video in your marketing. Yeah, video is probably the number one key secret right now, okay? We've been doing video for 10 years. We were <laughs> one of the pioneers to bring in video to, to selling properties. Mm. But the amount of technology out there nowadays, video really sells the lifestyle and the emotion and, and that's what we're trying to do. A photo is great, but interacting with the people online and stuff like that. And you can't do that in the newspaper. So I'm very anti-newspaper because you don't know where, which newspaper your best buyer is looking at. So online is where it's at for us. But a video selling the lifestyle, the area and the property and having that agent actually present to, to the viewer or the buyer is absolute key. So I wouldn't run any longer than a two minute video because you're gonna start losing your audience. So the, the video has to be quite quick and snappy and to the point. Mm -hmm. but. You've also then got 3D technology that's mm. come out, which is uh, what we call a Matterport. We're very lucky in, in our company that we've got that technology, but it's putting it's on the goggles. Like you, you can be there 100%. in the home online. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we could be selling a home to somebody in India, India, Singapore, China, New York. They actually don't even have to physically come to the home with the technology that's out there nowadays. So there is a lot around the marketing, so professional ph photography, video, floor plans, 3D tours, the buy the agent has to have a really good database, that's absolute key. Um, where you're positioned on the websites, so everyone says, oh look, we, we can put you on realestate.com, it's the number one website. Well, is it the number one website? Because I know for a fact it's not the number one website in Melbourne and Sydney. Hmm. So if I'm selling a home in Brisbane, how can I, get those Sydney investors or the people living in the state. So you need to make sure that you're on all the websites, but you don't want to be on page 10. So you do need to pay a little bit extra to, to bump your, your listing up, you know, on, on the rankings. So you, you want the biggest ad, you want the boldest ad, uh, you want lots of photos, top quality photos, stuff like that. So it's all really key, simple stuff, but probably the biggest thing that we haven't touched on is social media. Mm. Let's talk about that because it's the new newspaper, it's the new television I've heard, that mobile phone. If you go past any uh, coffee shop, you don't see people thumbing through the newspaper anymore, you see them thumbing through their device. And you've had agents come from around the country and around the world, like I said, to learn from you about how you're using social. What are you doing for property sellers on social media? Yeah, key couple of areas, probably the, the couple of big ones is obviously YouTube for the video. Um, Facebook is probably the number one though. So, you know, we can boost that property out there where we, as agents, we can pay to have that property seen. We can actually pinpoint an area where that property can be seen in, in what locations. So, you know, there's some amazing things out there in, in social land. Snapchat, where we can do live open home feeds um, when we're at the property to, to all our followers on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So social media is now playing a massive part in marketing and selling a property because this is the great thing about it. I could, I could post a photo of your home, Glenn, for sale and your family, your friends, they share it. And then their friends and family, they see that you've shared it. And it's just, it's just a big spider web. And mm. that's the beauty of, of social media. So yes, the internet helps, but I think social media in, in the future is definitely gonna be maybe the number one way to selling a property pretty soon. Mm. So Chris, a lot of that stuff though, it says to me that it's gonna cost me a fortune as a home seller. I'm playing devil's advocate because I've seen some of these agents out there literally wanting me to drop $25,000 on my marketing campaign. And yours sounds like with these films, because you know, you're know you making these videos that look like Martin Scorsese, they look great. They look like Hollywood. The, all of this stuff, it sounds and looks like it's expensive. Talk to me about the cost. How much should I be investing in the marketing of this property in all of these media? Yeah, look, I think where my sellers are lucky, you know, you wouldn't even be spending more than $2,000 on, on marketing to do everything. To get that all that do. stuff. Yeah, 100%. So the key thing for us is we don't do the newspaper anymore, mm. okay? so. Uh, sellers are spending, you know, anywhere from three, four, five, up to twenty thousand dollars, depending on their size of the ad, for their local newspaper. Mm. Now, crazy! I, I don't know the last time I brought a newspaper. I, I don't even know the last time that a, the best buyer came from the newspaper. Where these videos that we create, sure they cost a couple of hundred dollars, but on social media, YouTube, on the internet sites for the real estate websites, 
are costing us about one to three cents per view. Mm. It's so cheap. Wow. Yeah, I love it. And I love the fact that you've uh, really are leading the field because you have agents literally coming to your seminars to learn how to do these things. Because I remember, you know, you were at a training teaching about how we can drop that pin with a little radius. And that innovation in Facebook was literally only a month or so ago. So uh, it's a credit to you that you're staying cutting edge, not back in ye olde worldy. And who's benefiting? Your sellers. So it's great to see, mate. Yeah, look, the, the future of real estate has changed. It's not like selling a home 10, 20 years ago. And we've got to stay at the forefront. And the seller has to pick an agent that is, you know, is up to with all that sort of stuff. So if, a, if a, an agent's coming to their homes and they're pinching them for a $10,000, $20,000 marketing campaign, I'd really be questioning and saying, well, where is my best buyer going to come from? Or is that just advertising you and the, your company? Yeah, advertising the agency. That's right, as opposed to which is completely wrong. That's not what we're here for. Mm. Okay, well, not me personally. We're here to, to get the result, to sell the property, get paid, move on, tell them, they'll tell all their friends how great we were, and that's how we work as in, in our business. But social media, I believe, is, is the key, mm. definitely. All right, so other than little bonus track, I'm gonna hit Chris up for one little bonus track. So hit me up next time for another episode where I've got a bonus question for you, but that's it in our How to Sell series for you. I do trust that you avail yourself of Chris Gilmore's book that encapsulates many of these strategies, soldin60seconds.com.au. Using the code there, you can avoid paying the $30. Chris has graciously given us a free copy as a viewer of the show. So there's your code, there's your website. Grab yourself a copy. Uh, Chris, I really thank you for this series, mate. I know it's been a whole lot of help for a whole lot of sellers. Yeah, look, I hope they, they get great value out of it. And uh, Glenn, thanks for having me on your show. My pleasure. Folks, until next time, what a special edition of Real Estate Experts. Until the next episode, bye for now.